On a fateful day in February 2018, tragedy struck at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, when a 19-year-old former student named Nicholas Cruz unleashed terror on unsuspecting students and staff. In a brutal killing spree, Cruz opened fire, murdering 17 innocent people and injuring another 17, before he fled the scene on foot. Welcome to this video, where we will be discussing the tragic event that took place at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. In the wake of this horrific incident, the community of Parkland and the wider world were left reeling, and the conversation around gun control and mental health was reignited once again. Join us as we explore the events leading up to the shooting, the day itself, and the aftermath that followed. However, please be aware that this video contains disturbing details and graphics related to this tragic event. And viewer discretion is advised. Nicholas Cruz was a troubled young man whose life was marked by violence, trauma, and tragedy. Born in South Florida in 1998, Cruz was adopted by a couple who struggled with their own personal and financial issues. Cruz's childhood was marked by instability and turmoil, as his parents divorced when he was young and he was shuttled between different homes and caregivers. As a child, Cruz was diagnosed with a variety of mental health issues, including ADHD, depression, and anxiety. He struggled in school and was often disciplined for behavioral issues. He also had a history of violent outbursts and was known to have harmed animals and threatened classmates. Cruz attended a number of schools throughout his life, including Cross Creek School, a school for students with emotional and behavioral disabilities, and Stoneman Douglas High School, where he later committed the shooting. Cruz was reportedly expelled from Stoneman Douglas High School in February 2017 for disciplinary reasons. As a result, he was not permitted to bring a backpack onto the school premises. Jim Gard, Cruz's former math teacher, disclosed that this restriction was due to threats Cruz had made against other students. Additionally, Gard believes that the school administration had warned teachers about Cruz's potential to pose a threat. Cruz was described by multiple students as creepy, weird, and not fitting in with the rest of the students. One student who knew him said he was always a little crazy and would shoot guns because it gave him an exhilarating feeling. Cruz was considered an outcast by his peers and was not accepted socially at the school. He was known to wear patriotic shirts that were seen as extreme, and he would often deride Muslims as terrorists and bombers. According to a student, Cruz even wore a Trump hat. Overall, Nicholas Cruz's life prior to the shooting was one of isolation and troubled behavior. Cruz had a fascination with firearms and reportedly owned several guns, including the AR-15 rifle that he used in the shooting. He had posted pictures of himself on social media posing with guns and knives, and had even allegedly expressed a desire to shoot up a school. When Cruz was 17 years old, his mother died of pneumonia. This was a devastating blow to the already struggling young man, and it is believed that this event was a major turning point in his life. In the months leading up to the shooting, Cruz had displayed increasingly erratic behavior, including threatening other students and teachers. The FBI was even alerted to a comment left on a YouTube video in September 2017 that was believed to have been made by Cruz, stating, I'm going to be a professional school shooter. Despite being alerted to this potential threat, the FBI failed to take action and neglected to conduct further investigation. On February 15, 2018, tragedy struck Stoneman Douglas High School when Nicholas Cruz was dropped off by an Uber driver at 2.19 p.m., only 20 minutes before the end of the school day. He was carrying a backpack and a rifle case, which did not go unnoticed by a staff member who recognized him and saw him walking purposefully towards Building 12. This staff member reported what he saw to a colleague, but did not pursue Cruz or call for a code red to lock down the school. He explained that his training only required him to report threats and he did not perceive Cruz as an immediate danger. At exactly 2.21 p.m., Nicholas Cruz entered the lengthy and narrow hallway on the first floor of Building 12. 
the three-story structure housed 30 classrooms and was a busy center of learning, usually filled with over 900 students and 30 teachers. As Cruz walked, he came across a group of students in the open corridor. Without hesitation, he lifted his weapon and pulled the trigger. The sound of gunshots echoed through the halls as bullets hit his unsuspecting victims. Three students were killed instantly in the hallway, while Ashley Baez was struck in the left thigh and quickly fled for cover in a nearby restroom. Cruz proceeded to fire through the closed doors of four different classrooms, resulting in the death of six more students and the injury of an additional 13 during the ensuing chaos. Many classrooms did not have safe spots with strong corners, and some furniture blocked the few safe spaces available, which made it difficult for students to find shelter during the incident. Two of those killed were students in a Holocaust history class taught by Ivy Skamis. Skamis was teaching a lesson on combating hate when Cruz fired shots into her classroom. Around five students from Skamis' class were injured. The fire alarm had gone off, likely triggered by the smoke from the gunfire, and students on the third floor poured into the hallway. Some of their classroom doors automatically locked behind them as part of the school's safety protocol. In the midst of chaos and horror, Chris Hickson, an athletic director and campus monitor, heard the sound of gunfire. Despite being unarmed, he ran towards the commotion, hoping to offer assistance to those in need. As he approached a set of double doors leading to the hallway on the west side of the building, the shooter, Nicholas Cruz, turned and fired at him. The bullet struck Hickson, causing him to bleed profusely. In spite of his injury, Hickson refused to give up. He crawled towards a nearby wall, seeking refuge behind it. The western stairwell loomed ahead of him, offering a potential escape route, but Cruz's continued gunfire prevented him from attempting to make a run for it. Instead, Hickson remained hidden, clutching at his wound and struggling to stay conscious. The confusion among school employees continued, and a code red was not called until a staff member discovered a victim's body and heard gunfire. The teachers on the third floor grew anxious as they heard gunshots coming from below. They quickly tried to get their students into their respective classrooms and locked all the bathroom doors. Cruz made his way to the second floor and found no one there. The students were terrified upon hearing the gunshots and had hidden in their classrooms, away from the windows. Cruz thought to himself that the students had fled, and muttered. No one is here, as he walked towards the eastern side of the school. He suddenly fired into two classrooms before making his way to the third floor, where he encountered roughly 20 people in the corridor. He opened fire, wounding several students and fatally shooting Scott Beigel, a geography teacher and cross-country coach, who was holding a classroom door open for fleeing students. At the end of a long corridor, Ernest Raspierski, a teacher of geography and history, found himself huddled in the alcove of a locked classroom with several students. They were a few rooms away from the western stairwell, which could potentially serve as an escape route. As Cruz turned his attention elsewhere, Rospierski made a quick attempt at another neighboring door. Unfortunately, it too was locked, leaving them with limited options. Cruz continued to reload his weapon, while Rospierski frantically searched for a way out. Suddenly, an opportunity presented itself. Rospierski seized the moment and led the remaining students towards the nearby stairwell. Cruz noticed the commotion and began firing again. Fortunately, Rospierski and eight students managed to reach safety. Despite this, two others were not so lucky. Jamie Gutenberg and Peter Wong, both were under 16 years old, were shot just a few feet from the safety of the stairwell. Cruz then attempted to shoot out the hurricane-resistant windows of a teacher's lounge facing the yard to target students and staff fleeing below, but failed. After his rifle possibly jammed, Cruz dropped it on the floor and left the scene, blending in with fleeing students. He walked to a fast food restaurant, stopping at a mall to get a soda on the way and lingering before leaving on foot at 3.01 p.m. Police arrested Cruz about two miles from the school, 
in the Wyndham Lakes neighborhood of Coral Springs at around 3.40 p.m. He was then taken to a hospital emergency room with labored breathing before being released back into police custody and booked into the Broward County Jail after 40 minutes. This tragedy left an indelible mark on the community and sparked national debates on gun control and school safety. After the shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, Nicholas Cruz was arrested and charged with 17 counts of premeditated murder and 17 counts of attempted murder. He initially pleaded not guilty to all charges, but later changed his plea to guilty in exchange for the prosecution not seeking the death penalty. In January 2019, a judge ruled that Cruz was competent to stand trial after a psychological evaluation. The trial was set for January 2020, but was postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. It was rescheduled for January 2021, but was again postponed due to concerns about the pandemic. In March 2021, Cruz pleaded guilty to all charges against him. His plea was accepted by the court, and he was convicted of all counts of murder and attempted murder. The sentencing phase of the trial began in May 2021, with the prosecution seeking a sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole. The defense argued that Cruz's troubled past and mental health issues should be taken into consideration, and that he should not receive the death penalty. The judge accepted the recommendation by the jury, and formally sentenced Cruz to life in prison without the possibility of parole in July 2021. The sentencing hearing was emotional, with many victims' family members and survivors giving impact statements. Cruz showed no emotion during the hearing. Cruz is currently serving his sentence in a Florida state prison. The legal proceedings surrounding his case were highly publicized and controversial, with many advocating for stricter gun control laws in the United States. The incident resulted in several accusations, including criticism towards Scott Peterson for not entering the building to intervene in the shooting, despite being armed with a gun. Scott Peterson was a school resource officer at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. According to footage from camera surveillance, he was seen outside Building 12 during the initial moments of the shooting. It is known that he was carrying a handgun, but he did not enter the building and instead remained outside for the rest of the incident despite hearing gunshots and knowing that students were inside. Peterson later claimed that he believed the shooting was coming from outside the building, and that he thought he was following protocol by waiting for backup. However, an investigation revealed that Peterson had actually heard gunshots coming from inside the building and had failed to take action. After the shooting, Peterson was heavily criticized for his inaction. Many people, including parents of the victims and the public, believed that Peterson could have prevented some of the deaths and injuries if he had taken action. The criticism was so severe that Peterson resigned from his job as a school resource officer shortly after the shooting. The investigation also revealed that Peterson had not followed the Broward Sheriff's Office active shooter policy, which required him to immediately confront the shooter. Peterson was subsequently charged with multiple counts of child neglect, culpable negligence, and perjury. Accusations were made towards school administrators for failing to take adequate steps to prevent the shooting, including concerns about the lack of physical security measures. Law enforcement officers were accused of not responding quickly enough or not taking sufficient action during the incident. Mental health professionals were also accused of failing to identify and address the mental health issues that Nicholas Cruz was reportedly experiencing prior to the shooting. Some critics have also accused politicians of failing to take adequate action on gun control and school safety measures in the wake of the incident. The aftermath of the Stoneman Douglas High School shooting was marked by a wave of grief, outrage, and calls for action from politicians, activists, and ordinary citizens alike. The tragic event, which left 17 people dead and 17 others injured, was one of the deadliest school shootings in U.S. history, and it shook the nation to its core. In the immediate aftermath of the shooting, students, teachers, and parents in Parkland and across the country grappled with the horror and trauma of the event. Many struggled to come to terms with the loss of loved ones, classmates, and colleagues, 
while others faced the difficult task of recovering from physical injuries or dealing with the long-term effects of psychological trauma. Meanwhile, the broader public reaction to the shooting was characterized by a renewed sense of urgency around gun control and school safety. The survivors of the shooting, along with their families, quickly emerged as powerful voices in the national debate over gun violence, and they organized a series of high-profile protests and demonstrations to demand change. One of the most prominent initiatives to emerge from the aftermath of the shooting was the formation of the advocacy group called Never Again MSD, which was founded by students at Stoneman Douglas High School. The group, which focused on promoting gun control measures and holding politicians accountable for their responses to gun violence, quickly gained national attention and became a leading force in the movement for gun reform. Politically, the shooting prompted a range of responses at the state and federal levels. In Florida, Governor Rick Scott signed a bill that implemented new restrictions on gun sales and ownership, as well as measures to improve school safety. The bill also allowed for the arming of properly trained teachers and the hiring of additional school resource officers. At the federal level, the shooting spurred renewed debate over gun control measures, but no significant new legislation was passed in the immediate aftermath of the shooting. However, the issue remained a prominent topic of discussion in the run-up to the 2018 midterm elections, with many candidates and voters citing the shooting as a key reason to support stricter gun laws. Overall, the aftermath of the Stoneman Douglas High School shooting was a complex and multifaceted period in American history marked by tragedy, resilience, and a renewed sense of urgency around issues of gun violence and school safety. While the shooting will undoubtedly leave a lasting impact on the individuals and communities affected by it, the event also served as a catalyst for significant social and political change. As we reflect on the tragic events that unfolded on February 14, 2018, at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, we are reminded of the importance of taking action to prevent such atrocities from occurring again. We must continue to honor the memory of the 17 individuals who lost their lives that day by advocating for sensible gun laws and prioritizing the safety of our schools and communities. Our thoughts and prayers are with the families and loved ones affected by this senseless act of violence. May we never forget the lives lost and the impact that this tragedy has had on our nation. And as always, thank you for watching.